Good evening and welcome to the February 1st Ordinance Review Committee. This meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. First up is the roll call. Roll call, Laura, please. Sure. Uh, Councillor Thorpe. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Member Peck. Here. And Member Napolitano. Here. Okay, thank you, Laura. Next on our agenda is the public comment. Um, Laura, do we have anyone for public comment? We do not. Okay, um, if someone decides to join us later, we will allow them to uh, be heard. But moving on uh, to the agenda, on the agenda next is the approval of minutes of December 15th, 2020 and January 4th, 2000, actually it should be Yep, December 15, 2020 and January 4th, 2021. Threw me off for a minute. So motion for approval of the minutes. Second. Motion to approve. Oh. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. How did I know, hey, Megan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want you to be disappointed. <laughs> so, You've never disappointed. I, so I, which, okay, so. But, but rest assured, I've already sent the very minor corrections over to Laura. So I will just read this so it's in the public sphere. Um, so let's see. I hope I remember what they are. Oh, I think there was an extra sentence um, on page five. Of the... uh, she wants to be very, <laughs> it's probably not page five. Are you, is everyone looking at the minutes? You don't- Which one are you looking, looking at, December 15th or, or January 4th? Are we, aren't we looking at January 4th? January 4th, oh. January 4th, okay. I think we've discussed December 15th, right? And, mm -hmm. and I made those changes. Vote. Yeah. Okay. She made those changes. So, um, so in the interest of transparency, she wants to be very clear about how they have set parameters for review. Why decide to look at some ordinances and not others? Otherwise, there's semblance of randomness or arbitrariness out of the thousand possible. Why do we look at these ordinances and not others? Um, uh, and also the very last sec section number nine, adjourn. Um, uh, Laura gave me a promotion to counselor. <laughs> <laughs> so that needs to be changed to member PEC. Okay. And that's it for that's, me. That's an interesting pr promotion at some point, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> do you want it? Do you really? <laughs> it's, it's, do you it's want not it? easy. To <laughs> oh, it's really easy. What you asked key. for. What's that? Okay. I was so like, be if careful it's that, what you I asked for. Yes. <laughs> I didn't and ask. <laughs> that. Uh, so motion for the approval of those minutes as outlined by Member Peck. I think we've got a motion on the floor already. We already okay. have the motion on the floor. Perfect. Thank you. So large, seconded by Councillor Nash. All right. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the approval of the minutes for December 15, 2020 and January 4, 2021 as amended by Councillor Peck. Laura, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Uh, member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. It looks okay. like we have a member of the public. Okay, someone did join. Um, Do I? Jackie Balance. I hope I'm pronouncing the name properly. But, uh, You're straight, just here to see what's going on. Okay, okay. just wanted to make sure in case you wanted to make a public comment, we'd, you'd be more than welcome to uh, allow you to do that. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is the request to consider section 312-43, parking for physically handicapped. This was brought to our attention by 
Councillor Marianne Labarge and Councillor Karen Foster. Or can we have that up on the screen? ordinance up. Sure. Let me screen share one second. Thank you. you. Council Labarge, would you like to be heard on this? Yes, um, I sent it also to our city solicitor, Alan Seawald. And um, if you look at the language here, it's like a little confusing. So we need to decide um, what language <laughs> we want to put in. So I would like to have the city solicitor come forth and speak on this, please. Hey. Attorney Seawald? Uh, yeah, let me, oop. good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, good evening. So I did review this and um, I, I Sorry. there seems to be um, two things that uh, Council Labarge uh, was asking me about. Uh, one, there had been some revisions as you can see with regard to the use of the word handicapped and um, I just want to clear my screen here so I can actually see. Do you want me to stop sharing? No, no, no. I'm, I've got too many faces here to oh. actually see the document. Um, and, uh, and you know, uh, moving to the word accessible uh, parking space as opposed to handicapped parking space. But then throughout the, the draft, there, it, there continues to be references to handicapped and I sent an email to Council Labarge um, uh, back on January 12th and I think Laura you got this as well yes. um, and basically I pointed out that there are that the ordinance as redrafted remains inconsistent because there are references to accessible disabled and handicapped and so that we ought to decide on one term and use it um, the other issue that uh, Council Labarge was asking me about was the uh, the fee for issuance of a temporary permit, <laughs> and I pointed out to her that uh, fees are decided at the departmental level, as is provided in state law that was accepted by the City Council some years back, and so it's not appropriate in the ordinance to set the fees for issuing temporary permits. Uh, and so th that's the last I heard of it on January 12th, and uh, that's where we are. So this would, you know, if we want to make a recommendation to the city council, I think that as a committee, um, you ought to decide what term you want to use uh, to describe the, the permit and the parking space. Other members of the committee like to be heard. Councillor Nash. Yeah, I, you know, uh, Councillor Labarge, I, this is a great idea. I, I real, I strongly support this change in language. Um, that, um, I, that, the by and large, the the field of that works with people with disabilities <laughs> have already, you know, shifted away from words like handicapped and um, and I think this is on the right track. And I, I can see within the draft here how, you know, what uh, attorney Seawald is, is referencing around how, you know, the language is so embedded within the language that you, you, it's like a little bit of whack-a-mole here. As soon as you pull it out of one, you still have it in another spot. And, and the one that stood out for me um, had to do with, uh, and, and maybe attorney Seawald can speak to this. There's one of the key things to be around this word of mobility or, or the word impairment. And that, um, that I'm wondering if that's referencing mass general law because that's gonna frame a lot of our language here. So um, I, it's kind of an open-ended question, attorney Seawald It's the type I ask. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. I don't know whether it's referring to 
impairment, but you know there are impairments that would not qualify one for a parking permit. Right. So I think it's that's another place where we get into the weeds of the language because, um, it, it, right, it it defines who gets the permit, and um, and what we call it in the end may may be more acceptable, but th that language to get the permit is 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 probably going to be a little thorny still. Is, um, is this something, uh, Councillor Barge, that that maybe should be referred first to the disability commission and then back to the ordinance review we have already talked you've already this. regarding yes. consistent hmm. talking about the ordinance itself and the language in the language yes okay. yep. it's been very confusing okay so but i can bring it back up again and talk with them on the commission about deciding on a language. I mean, you're looking at accessibility, disabled or handicapped. Right. Um, hmm. And I think another issue here was the, the fee. And I understand where our city solicitor is coming at, but when you have a disability, you go to a doctor, and the doctor is the one who diagnoses you of what that disability is. So you make out a form, your doctor signs the form, and it goes into the registry of motor vehicles. I'm talking about a permanent one that mm -hmm. could be for three months or six months or ever. I did not even realize that we had a temporary one in the city at City Hall and charging a fee for somebody with just a temporary one, which could be like somebody who is it just an employee of the city or is it, it could be me or anybody else who all of a sudden has a temporary um, injury that has made them become disabled, like, you know, a sprained ankle, a broken leg or ever. And a doctor would make that out to get a temporary pet permit from the Registry of Motor Vehicles or whatever of being ha handicapped at that point. So I was a little confused city solicitor in regards about that fee part, but I understand where you're coming at. I believe this this is not done through the registry of motor vehicles. This is a local yes. permit. Right. Okay. So it, it would not be, you couldn't go to East Hampton and use this temporary permit. Okay. Thank you. It's lower cost because you get an extension of a temporary permit if you needed it. I believe there is a provision. There I mean, is this, a provision. Yeah, there is a provision for a certain number of uh, extensions. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I, did, I can't fine? see you. Oh, oh. sorry. Councillor Nash. Yeah, I so I fully support where this is going. I don't think it's there yet. And I, I think that the, the best place for it to go would be um, back to the Disability Commission to uh, work out some of those details. Of course, it could, it, you know, were ordinance review, this could go, you know, be put on the floor at council and, um, and then sent to legislative matters. But I, I think that the best place to go would be to work all of this out back at the Disability Commission and, um, and work with uh, Attorney Seawald around hashing out a little more of the language and then bringing it back to council. But I, uh, I fully support where this is going. Yeah. Right, because we have been talking about it at the Commi Commission on Disabilities. But I don't have a problem, Councilor Thorpe, sending it back to the Commission on Disabilities or either Councilor Nash. I just want to get this straightened out and put in the appropriate language because it's really confusing here. Well, and, and I just wanna add, this is completely within, you know, the, the boundaries of what we're supposed to be looking at, that this, this is language that's, you know, out, really outdated and, and, you know, in demeaning in some ways and that, um, that it's time to, to update this right. and, um, what was the date of that ordinance, Laura? 
Um, let's see. Was it 1986? 1981, October 15th, yeah. Long time. I was just starting law school. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I will bring it up with Keith and talk to him about that and we'll put it on our agenda. Okay. So motion to send Mr. this to Mr. Mr. Chair, may, may I suggest that this be put on the list, which I think is we're going to have a list of those um, ordinances that this, this committee would like the council to look at. Um, I think there are going to be a number of those kinds of ordinances that we're not actually suggesting uh, how to change it, but that that they be changed, as opposed to just sending it out and and you know so, and not dealing with that at all at this committee. So let's send it to bucket number three. Councilor Nash is shaking his head. I oh. I thought that. <laughs> I, yes. Uh, Nick, Megan? I think that's, I think the buckets are only um, helpful for us and as we are working, but, um, you know, for the purposes of the report, I don't think so. Um, we, I, I don't I'm quite also, it, it, it's an existing ordinance that might need amend, amendments, depending on what the Disability Commission comes back with, but at this stage, it sounds like they're more technical changes. Um, Could be bucket one. Feel, Could bucket be bucket one. one. And so we, maybe we don't, so perhaps it could just be part of that spreadsheet um, that um, we attach to our report um, that doesn't have a lot of qualitative kind of reasoning of that. Oh, please, Attorney Seewald. I, I, maybe I'm just, you know, mixing up my buckets here, but I thought bucket one was the bucket that we were actually making proposals for language changes, mm -hmm. uh, technical changes, housekeeping kind of changes. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just don't know, are we going to actually make the changes or suggest specific changes to this? My only concern is, you know, having spoken with the chair um, since the last meeting, I've learned that the meeting on the 8th is not going to happen. And, and then we only have a couple more meetings. And I, I'm just really concerned about adding more to, to this committee trying to get done before we actually have to be starting to look at a report and going through the report. Um, I agree. Well, is there anything more than just the, is there anything substantive other than just the, the changing of the names, which is important, of course, but is, is it just an issue of changing the, the nomenclature? That I don't know. In um, which case, I think it would go into bucket one, which is just, you know, all... logistical changes. Yeah. Okay. So um, if that's what you want, then I can try and um, um, make those changes and get it back to this committee for the next meeting because I don't think it could go back to the disability committee and get back here in time, um, you know, to be considered by this committee. So that's, you know, that's the only reason I'm bringing this up is because of the short time that we have left and the few meetings that we have left. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Attorney Seawald. So. Thank you. With that, we're going to to do a roll call to refer this to bucket number one. We actually need a motion on the motion. floor. Sorry, motion on the floor. I make a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> been made, seconded by Megan Peck. And now, Roll call as to moving this forward to bucket number one. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. Yes. Okay. That is done. Next on the agenda, remaining ordinances to review further research needed work plan for second phase. I think. 
Megan's going to, yes. Take up the next two hours, okay. No. <laughs> I think the last meeting we've had, there was, uh, feels like a yawn ago, uh, there was a, there was some tension um, about, um, I, I think, um, um, how to, and how to structure this report. Um, you know, there, the executive summary I offered was, uh, as Attorney Seawall said, kind of a 30,000, you know, sort of aerial view. Um, but he really advised that we really ground our work in just the just specific ordinance reviews going forward. Um, and I actually agree with that. I mean, I don't think those two things are in conflict. And I can see how that can coexist. Um, we have some, we, we can make high level recommendations, but um, also we have uh, quite a few very specific ordinances um, where we start our, uh, from where our recommendations um, emanate. So uh, I have a, I have a document to share that, I'll try to do this. Um, share screen. Okay. Hmm. Maybe Laura will have to do this. You have it? There's one page that I. You're not together. able to screen share. Yeah, let me get it from my inbox Thank for you. a second. I'm not sure what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a moment, just getting it. So, um, on my lunch hour today, I was looking through the minutes for January 4th, and I realized that it would be it actually is a really good example of how we can do our work going forward. Um, I, I organized this. Uh, finally, <laughs> there we go. So, and this is such a timely, timely day to do this too, because uh, this, was, uh, this was a meeting about in which we, um, Councillor Foster visited and brought up this uh, ordinance 312-31. Um, and so I went through the minutes and I pulled this pull this information out of here. The, so there's the, um, as uh, the commentator, Mary Jones um, presented this problem to us. Um, we have the context that's provided by her and Councillor Foster. Uh, in highlighted in yellow is the relevant ordinance. And below is a list of the policy app options that were proposed by the committee. So I went through and I um, quickly labeled, and this is probably, this is, you, you all have to correct me here. Just very quickly, I try to sort these policy options into the categories of ordinances that tend to impact marginalized populations um, like parking, purchasing and hiring, um, zoning, rental housing, 
And then I bolded also the type of um, the category of the action. And again, that's just, that's probably, you know, I, I look to be corrected there as well. So I, I think for the report, this to me, it seems like it would be a very user-friendly way to understand what we've been doing. I could, I could easily go back to, you know, any, the other previous sets of minutes and also, and, you know, um, pull this information out. Um, so we'll have, you know, within the next couple of meetings, we will have, um, we'll have like categories of, um, say, ordinance amendments, um, possible new, new ordinances, um, and then other things uh, that rise in our discussions that are actually, you know, executive actions or agency or board initiative, um, et cetera. So is this um, understandable to anyone here? I'm not getting a lot of feedback. So, I can't Megan, see your faces. Yeah, Megan, I think this is, uh, um, um, I think this is phenomenal what you presented here and uh, the fact that you did it during your lunch break. <laughs> uh, speak volumes to it, something that would take me a month to, uh, you know, uh, put, yeah, yeah. Uh, other I members, comment? Very rough. And Jeff? Yeah, I, I mean, this is, this is actually the first time that I've been excited about um, something that we might produce um, as a yeah. committee. Um, because I've been sort of thinking about like, well, if we're thinking solely in context of revising ordinances or adopting new ordinances, then um, we're looking at a very narrow scope. But mm -hmm. if we can, we have the latitude to rec recommend, you know, sort of a, a, a basket of options um, that are within the power of the mun municipality, whether it's the mayor or an agency or a department or whatever, um, of course, nobody has to take our advice, but um, it would be useful to offer that advice as a way to sort of address the things that we have heard in a concrete way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is great. This is, I'm, I'm embarrassed I didn't think about this. <laughs> no, you did. I'm just trying to pull together all of our, I mean, as many of our, you know, uh, in, uh, proposals as possible. Yeah. Um, we've been, yeah. And so it's. Uh, this is great. Uh, I don't see yeah, Councilor Nash. Do you I, have any? I think my other point is that, sorry, just like even when we start with very specific ordinances, you know, our discussions are going to to surface the, a lot of things. I mean, we um, we've had so many hours. We <laughs> Attorney Seawold has had to school us for many hours about many um, you know legalities and technicalities of current ordinances and you know the the home rule um, civil relationships and all of these things that are pertinent to our review and you know what we've discovered through so far really I I'm I feel very convinced that you know ordinances may not be the best remedy clearly are the generally not the best remedy for a lot of these um, these social problems, right? They're simply, they're so cumbersome, they take too long to develop, to approve, to enact. And um, we're so limited by, because of the, what is that called? Um, limited. Civil relationships <laughs> or something. Occupants. Yeah, the occupancy, occupancy of, yeah. <laughs> um, Determined by state statutes. <laughs> Feel free to correct me. I, I, <laughs> I, I embarrass myself too much, Attorney Seawald. Okay, and you're doing so, just fine. Seriously. Um, yeah, and I think it would be more just truthful to say this is, you know, uh, this is very much a part of 
this is as much a part of our work as looking at the, you know, uh, I, I mean, this is this is just part of the ordinance review. Um, we have to un <coughs> understanding what is um, what the limitations are, and you know, what are better alternate ways to address these problems. Thank you, Megan. Councillor Nash. So Megan, thank you for doing this. It, it, so my initial science, silence had to do with like, uh oh, that looks like a lot more work. <laughs> but at the same time, it, 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 I, what I really appreciate is, you know what it reminds me of is the sustainable Northampton plan that outlines different issues around making the plan happen. And then it, if you go into the details, it says, you know, planning board will do this, the mayor will, you know, different departments will look at things. And that, um, that I really like the, the way you broke down. There were so many working little parts playing into that parking discussion that, you know, and, and the, the way you lay it out that there's, I, I, I can't see it right now because, but there's like 12 different components all going on here. And that, um, that having a list of like, you know, letting the parking department know and the transportation and parking commission, they have, there's some ongoing discussion we would like to see them do there and to the mayor and to uh, the next mayor, whoever that mm -hmm. is, that there are some executive things that they can do. Um, uh, so I, I, I think it's a great format. And I also think that um, once I thought it through, it's like, oh, we're, we don't need to do this for everything that's come before us, but there was, but I would say there's probably like four or five different topics that we've touched on where this kind of breakdown would be really helpful as, as we pass it on to, uh, you know, folks to keep working on things. Mm -hmm. Do you want them to be centered? Oh, sorry. I should raise my hand. No, you're, you're, you're. After. Um, I do you want them to kind of be be centered on one start like this with the specific ordinance, and then all, we have all these sort of related sort of discussions and and then proposals. Do you um, would that work better? Do you think, um, Attorney Seawald, in the report? I think not only would it work better, but it's your entire charge. Your charge no, is not I, to, you know, your charge is to relate these to either existing ordinances or potential ordinances. But, okay. and, and again, you're, you're, you're not the committee to solve all social ills in Northampton. And I, and I don't mean to be flip about that. Your, your charge is to look at the ordinances and to consider what we could add to the ordinances, what we can take out of the okay. ordinances, or what we can change in the ordinances. And so I, you know, my insistence has been relate them to ordinances. When the Charter Review Committee was was dealing with, with the charter, I consistently had to say, but what does this have to do with the charter? They they were doing the same thing. And I'm not not criticizing your your desire to do it because we all want to make this a, a better, more sustainable, more representative place. Um, but you know often they would get off onto tangents and I just had to sort of reel them back into the charter and I want to reel you back into the ordinances. Okay, I, I'm sorry, so, my, um, my question was not about what our purpose is. I think we're in agreement on that, but merely the format, um, meaning should we organize this by say categories of, categories of problematic ordinances? Um, you know, parking, purchasing, hiring, and so forth, rather than just a specific, you know, random, uh, oh. arbitrary, specific ordinance that came before us. Because, uh, so that- but, but purchasing is not an ordinance. There are no- Oh, purchase. I'm just- oh, There are no I'm ordinances just using that about as purchasing example. because the mayor does purchasing. There are no okay. ordinances about that okay. and there aren't going to be any ordinance because the mayor does that hiring okay. the mayor hires so you know again i'm not really sure what you mean by purchasing and hiring um and okay. how about um <laughs> that was not a good example then um how about um 
parking or uh, zoning. Um, categories for which we have multiple ordinances. I think like that's a great is idea. That a, that's a great idea. Okay. As long as we're talking about ordinances, it's just a great idea to organize it that way. Um, Got it. Because I have to tell you that I'm feeling a bit disorganized at this point because you know, we've touched on so many things mm -hmm. and I think it would be really great if we could organize this in terms of categories of zoning and uh -huh. use of the public ways, which includes parking. And that's why parking is mm -hmm. ordinance because the public ways are one thing that's within the jurisdiction of the council to pass ordinances about. So that's, so you might expand on not just parking, but use of the public way use of public buildings. I mean, those are all the things that are within the, the jurisdiction of the council and could be sort of a, a category. Right. Uh, Councilor Nash. Right. So attorney Seawald, so it, if we were to take uh, member PECs um, uh, for, the, you know, like this is a report on one particular discussion we had and a kind of like a breakdown of an action plan. You wouldn't feel comfortable including something like that um, as an addendum to the report or as part of the report? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I mean, suggesting to the mayor about executive actions that could be taken in these areas mm -hmm. in addition to ordinances. I suppose we could, we could you know, my, my only concern is that there's no ordinance relating to that. I, I think it's, you might do this in an outside letter. Well, that not um, that the point though? That I'm we, sorry, I, I missed that. So we're, we're tasked with address, uh, uh, looking at ordinances and addressing um, where disparities may occur. And I guess the question is, um, if there's not any intersection of both of those things, do we simply not make any mention of it? Or do we say, okay, the mayor, you you picked us, you, you assembled uh, this commission, um, here are the issues that we heard about and that we discussed. These can be addressed but through ordinances and these are things that may take executive action mm -hmm. and, and may not, whatever. I don't think that, does that need, need to be a, something separate? Or I mean, as the commission, can't we say, these are not strictly already in ordinances. We're not sure if they could fit into ordinances necessarily, but they do address the disparities that you're talking about, or they would address the disparities that you're talking about, albeit not through the form of ordinances. I don't think that that's something that's appropriately in an ordinance review report. I think that it is something that you could point out that there are many, you could point out in your report that there are many things that we can't deal with through ordinances, but here are the things that we can deal with through ordinances. And, um, and you know, again, I, in your covering letter, you could be calling on the mayor to do certain things, but this is a report about ordinances. And I'm gonna, I, I, I know I'm not gonna be popular, but I'm going to try and ground you in the ordinances and, you know, what we can change through ordinances. Um, not about what we can't, I mean, you're not reviewing ordinances if you're talking about what we can't do with ordinances. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not telling you you can't encourage the mayor, but I would encourage you to do that through an outside uh, covering letter or some outside document or maybe an addendum outside the, the report, but we're talking about ordinances here. And, you know, there, and, you know, and I think that Councillors, as I think I've said before, councillors, new councillors are often surprised about how little power they have to, to effectuate change through ordinances. Their great power is through budgets, not through ordinances. And there are very specific areas that the state legislature has carved out for ordinances. Right. And it wouldn't be you know, I guess my right. job is to keep you focused on that. Thank you, Attorney Sewell. Um, Megan. Attorney Seewald, um, I think it's very, I, I think it would be actually difficult to, or we would be excluding a lot of our, a lot of our work if we did that. Say, if we were 
um, if if the if we were going to talk about a proposed ordinance, the Housing Notification Act, there are several provisions in that which are um, which violate the civil relationship, for instance, right? Interfere with and um, how do we how do we I mean how do we justify making that a recommendation? I mean it has it, it's not a you know it's it's kind of um, it's not an up or down kind of recommendation. Um, we we have to don't we have to talk about aspects of it that that do promote or alleviate inequalities and what is actually possible in an ordinance uh, for Northampton. I mean, so I, I mean, I can see, how I, I can, I, I feel like we can integrate all of that into an ordinance review. Um, as long as we we're very clear on what, what is a, what, what is allowed what in ordinances what now ordinances can cover. Um, I mean, even the charter review report had a section topics for further study. But I think they were trying to ground those in topics for the study for a charter, but not just topics for the mayor to, to, to do things outside the charter. They, that's, you know, I tried to keep them grounded in the charter. And so, uh, and you know, this tenant notification ordinance, I'm not sure that it alters civil relationships. And as I said before, as long as we're not gonna get sued for money damages, I'm willing to have a judge tell me we can't do it. But that's grounded in an ordinance. There may be things that the mayor would have to do to implement that, but that's true of every ordinance. And so we're grounded in an ordinance there about use of property, about relationships, but that's not something that is exclusive to the mayor and, and getting outside of ordinances and suggesting to the mayor that there are things that he or she needs to do um, to alleviate social injustice in the city. Well, we're I don't think that's what we're asking. No, no, well, let's not confuse the issue then. We're not saying there are things that he needs to do. We're saying that he charged us with identifying disparities, discrimination, and so forth. And we're saying, hey, we identified and talked about these topics. These can be addressed through these ordinances or something like this. However, these things came up and they can't be. And we suggest you look at that, not you do it, not mayor, you do that. Just saying, we discussed this. We don't believe at this time, or we've been told at this time, it can't be covered by ordinances, but it's one of those things that you told us that you were concerned about that we're supposed to be studying and merits looking at a little bit further. Let, let, me just, let me just push back a little bit on that member Napolitano because I don't think the mayor told you to do anything. I think the mayor is, you know, had his role in appointing members. The city council had a resolution that <laughs> called upon you to do these things um, and you've decided to do them. This is what you decided to do, not the mayor. I don't think the mayor ever suggested anything for this committee to do. And the truth is this committee operates pursuant to the charter and ordinance. There is an ordinance that controls what you do. You've decided to look at uh, properly because it's, 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 it's important, but you all decided to adopt what the city council resolution had in it and the city council resolution um, urged you to do, but nobody, charged you with doing this. This is your decision. Councillor Nash. Attorney Seawald, I really appreciate you setting up the guardrails for us here. And, but also it sounds like we may want to speak to things outside the guardrails. And what do you suggest would based on what we're saying, what, what would be a proper way to organize that? Would that be in this meeting? Would it be post uh, this committee once we've done our work? Um, uh, your thoughts on that? I fully support Member Napolitano's um, uh, proposal that we, and I would 
in an addendum or in a covering letter say we we were approached by you know with these different things and we've addressed in our report those things that we can do through ordinance to you know to make marginalized populations less marginalized and you know but these are the things that we really couldn't address but they are not in the report i don't have a problem with pointing out what what we could not address in the report um, I'll leave it at that. And but I, I again, I'm just trying to ground you in ordinances. And I think Member Peck's uh, proposal to categorize them in terms of zoning and uh, zoning and land use, uh, public ways and parking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's a great idea. You know, we can also organize okay. one with just our just you know sort of housekeeping changes. Um, which would include the new one that we had uh, tonight, you know, the disabled parking permits or accessible parking permits. Any so other? I think we need to say, uh, to use example of, of zoning. Um, I feel like to preface these sort of chapters of ordinances, I, I'd like to, um, I'd like to explain why why they are um, why why they are um, impactful. Um, you know, zoning changes can have um, outsized dramatic impacts on you know whether or not people move here or choose to stay here, whether they buy houses or um, can you know um, stay in their houses, whether they're um, you know whether they retain that house or and are able to um, pass that down to future generations as an asset, you know, and in that way, touch upon the, um, the structural barriers to, uh, to race, <laughs> structural barriers of racism, um, one of which, <laughs> the cause of one of which is intergenerational wealth equity. Um, so I feel like there's, if, um, and we are still, you know, these are still very specific ordinances that we would be reviewing, but um, we would also be fulfilling that our, our charge of looking at these ordinances through a very critical um, social justice lens. Do you have a what do you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm me, willing to. You, you had me right up until the, you know, the, um, the passing of inherited wealth. I mean, there's not a thing that. that I'm, I'm not that necessarily, can. I'm, I, but I'm referring not to the, the act of uh, the writing of wills. Um, I'm referring to the fact that it is an option. <laughs> it exists as an asset that, that, people are able to transfer to future generations. Um, and right there's a great amount of, I mean, I don't think I need to convince anyone about the racial disparities and in, um, in fixed assets like that for Americans, excuse me. Um, so- And zoning has been one of the main ways that we have, you know, uh, maintained our social structure. There's no doubt about it. And I think that's being recognized more and more right now. As a matter of fact, the state law was right. just changed so that um, zoning laws that um, allow for multi-family residential in all districts only needs a majority vote now. It doesn't need two thirds majority anymore. They just changed state law this month or last month to that effect. And so I think we're recognizing that more and more, but you know, th that's not, that in no way is going to change uh, intestacy laws. And it's not- No, and I don't. Not, right, so. And yeah. I just, so we were, I mean, we were asked to address, and I was asked at least verbally to address issues of um, effects upon vulnerable populations um, by the mayor. He, he did appoint me to this commission. Um, I don't think that there's a dispute about that. 
And so uh, I totally recognize that, to that there are limits to what the ordinance uh, review, the, this commission can do in terms of proposing how the ordinances may do that. But it seems to me unnecessary and ideological to simply refuse to mention the issues that we have, uh, that we have heard about often directly from people and relay that information as saying explicitly, we do not think, or at least we've been advised, we cannot address these through ordinances. But this does have something to do with um, the concerns. These are some of the current concerns that were brought to us. It just doesn't seem acknowledging that, there, that these are things that we can address or we believe that we can address or we've been advised that we can address through ordinances that's fine, that's understandable, but to not mention them at all seems ideological as opposed to making sense. I second that. I think that an argument could be made that it's ideological to mention things that have nothing to do with ordinances because the intergenerational wealth has nothing to do with zoning, nothing at all to do with zoning. Zoning is about land use, about not about the land user, it's about land use. And, um, and so, you know, the fact that property can be passed from one generation to another uh, really has nothing to do enables with zoning. The, I'm so sorry, it, it enables um, home ownership. Homes which are big, Part of um, what's the what's the negative? What's asset. the drawback? Is there an, is there an issue of like we we would be in trouble or liable for something if we mention these things? Not at all. Then what's the drawback? I, I'm I, I'm trying to just ground us in ordinances and when uh, and so I thought it was a very good idea to um, uh, to stay in ordinances and member packs proposal about grouping them in ordinances. If you want to mention that that's, that uh, one of the reasons that zoning um, uh, is important is because, because real estate is passed from generation to generation, it's, it's interesting, but I know, I, uh, and if you want to mention that, that's fine. I, I, I really don't want to spend the whole meeting talking about whether you mentioned that or not. But the truth is, property is going to be passed from generation to generation whether or not zoning is changed. There may be a lot less of it available, accessible to people who are marginalized. Um, I am willing to do the literature review or, you know, write this, um, I, I draft this part of the report. Um, if you're, um, if you could, Focus on just the the ordinance, the, the technical legalities. So that's fine. And I welcome anyone, <laughs> Jeff. If you want to help, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, I'll be in. I mean, I would. I hope that we all have a lot of input. Um, Councilor Nash, does that uh, Attorney Seawald, does that work need to be done in this meeting? But since it's not pertinent, it, it, you know, do we do we need to do that as a group, which which I, I'd be willing to do um, if that's the direction we're going in. But um, Attorney Seawall, it needs to be done here, right? Uh, I think that anybody who wants to independently work on this can work on it independently or in groups of, of you know of less than a quorum. Um, and, but the discussion of it happens in the meeting. Right, okay. So two of us could work together on like the, the sample draft that uh, member Peck showed us a little, a short time ago. Can't be assigned by this committee to go off and two people work on it. No, that would be a subcommittee. And so Got that it. would be, have to be done in open session. So <laughs> don't, don't, don't assign that to, to a group of two. Um, if you expect it to be done outside of the, the meeting. 
And obviously, if two people talk about it, they can't talk with a third person about it because that would be a quorum. Mm -hmm. Councilor Nash. I, I just feel like we're, we're, you know, we're, we're talking a bit in circles here that I, I think that um, I, I, I appreciate Attorney Seawald setting the boundaries here. And I, I, um, I think we want to honor that, but also I think that we as a group can, can take some, uh, have some latitude around adding in additional documents such as what uh, Member Peck has proposed a little while ago. I, I think that's, that's helpful. I also think that in terms of the, the, the number of things that have come before us, I, there's probably just another two, three, four items like this where it, it kind of went in so many different directions. You know, one of them being around renters rights and things like that, that there's all of these little places that it can go. And um, so I, I and uh, Member Peck seems uh, very uh, interested in doing the work around this. And I, I'd be more than happy to discuss it further in, in a meeting like this. I, I think it's, it's helpful in terms of the legacy of, because not everything, people come to us with stuff, they think it's ordinance, but it's not. It's further discussion in so many different places. And for us to be able to say, well, here's where you can take it. You know, here's where this discussion needs to keep going. I, I think that's, that's, that's a good outcome, so. So if, if I can suggest that, uh, I will put together a report, you know, all, you know, discussing sort of the the um, the important issues that really don't go into ordinances, and you as a board, as a committee, can supplement it. And that member Peck would be uh, would be modifying, and much as she does with her careful reading of the minutes, and she can bring her modifications to a meeting, and you all can vote on whether to uh, to include them or not. Um, but you know, my concern is that we've got, I think, um, Laura or, or Mr. Chairman, would you remind me how many more meetings we have of this committee. And it's gonna take at least a couple of meetings for you all to finalize this report after I draft it, which I'll, so we have five meetings between now and the end of March. So I think that, um, you know, we're talking now about, um, uh, remaining ordinances and work plan for the second phase. And that's what we're talking about now. So I think that we've got to sort of soon close the door on new things and, you know, get draft, you know, get this thing drafted. So you have at least two meetings to finalize it. Does that make sense to everybody? Right. Uh, Attorney Seawald, I think we have six more meetings. We're going to have five council to bars. Next week's meeting is going to be canceled due to the fact that there's a legislative matters planning board joint meeting regarding the two family homes by right. Oh, that's right. But I can see where Megan and the direction she's going in as a counselor, all of us counselor have heard about affordable housing, affordable housing. I'm going through this right now, right in Ward 6 and also on marginalized. That's a biggie, okay, of people being treated equally. And everything I've heard from attorney Seawald is absolutely correct here. And I'm gonna follow his path because right now we've all been told, no, this is not the right direction to go to. And I've attended many of the charter meetings and they had a tremendous amount of work to do. And I've been on that commission. And this one here, we are, were four months behind. And I think we've come a long way with losing that four months and doing an extension. So I think everything is going to work out fine here. And I have to agree with Councillor Nash. I think that we can go ahead as, as a committee and put forth whatever we want to put in on a recommendation of our thoughts. I'm just looking here. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. 
Jeff, I don't see you. Any comments, Jeff? No, I'm, I'm here. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I have no comments. Um, Megan. Uh, since you brought up the legislative matters meeting next week, um, I think when Wayne came to speak to us, he presented those um, ordinances and just um, not as ordinances, but really in conceptual form. And so we haven't really um, spent the time to review them um, for their impacts. So I would just propose us doing that. And I know it's there's a lot of momentum for going forward, but there's also been a lot of community pushback, as I remember from the last uh, public hearing. So let's, um, if we could put that on a, a upcoming agenda, February twenty second. What would you? What are you asking for? I'm sure it's like I'm asking so us to review the um, the new zoning ordinances. I think there are at least 10, correct? Attorney Seawald? Okay. There is. Laura's nodding too. I, I, you okay. looked out there for a second. I think my internet is an unstable. So I, yeah. there are 10 what? At least 10 new zoning ordinances related to the two families by right. Um, well, there's there's changes in each district and, to allow it. So, so each district has its own um, appendix uh, okay. And so each district, uh, but it's it's similar language in each of the mm -hmm. the different districts. I don't know how many. I don't know right. exactly. Okay. So we shouldn't be intimidated by the sheer number of them if they're all kind of variations on a theme. Um, should we? Um, I mean, should we put it to a vote whether to include um, review of that? In the upcoming meeting, I, Councillor Nash. Before I, so that well, here's the thing: is that particular uh, uh, zoning change is being reviewed. It's it's in the system. It's actually happening. Um, you know, there's a meeting next week. People can go to and speak to it. Uh, it's been in the pipeline for years. I think that um, at best, what we would be recommending is that. Uh, the planning board examine um, how ways to uh, provide more opportunities for housing, which is what this ordinance is about. That we would say, you know, oh, we'd like to see ideas like this move forward. And so um, that, um, but we can definitely all go to that meeting next week and weigh in from that perspective. I mean, what's happening is exactly what we want to happen. Um, and yeah, I have opinions too, and um, that are around it. Um, but that, um, but I think it's a, an example of something that's already doing exactly what we wanted to do. Attorney Seawold, I, I just want to point out that in, in you know it's not on the agenda to review tonight, obviously. And by the time you meet again, it will already have gone through the public hearing, and all, all likelihood, it's already going to be enacted before your report comes out. Uh, I so, understand. yeah, and so, uh, but since be, but since it, it's come before us during our six months, and we are not, you know, we're not, we are also part of our purview is also to is to review existing ordinances. Why? I mean, I don't think on that basis it should be excluded. But um, I mean, we don't certainly don't have to. Um, we can make a kind of a judgment call about um, which particular ordinances we, we want to cover in the report. But... Councilor Nash. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're expecting uh, Director Fiden at our next meeting and to be we, speaking. Uh, so before we go, I, we're gonna request that he if he would appear at our next meeting. And, you know, I would think at the next meeting would possibly talk about demographics and right. stuff that could be beneficial um, or helpful in our report, uh, such as the, um, uh, the, you know, there's six maps that um, um, regarding uh, resilience and uh, demographics and maps and 
the American Community Survey. So I think that's other stuff that could be related to this. So there's gonna be a request, but that has not been made yet. Thank you. Um, well, it, it might be helpful it, if he accepts our invitation, if he could also, and, and maybe this is more Carolyn's role, but just kind of lay out where, I think plan, planning has a, a, beyond this two family thing that's being discussed, I think they have other um, proposed changes that might be, uh, it, it would be good for us to hear as to what that overall package looks like. So to have that kind of overview would be good. Council DeBarge, are you all set? Fine. Megan? I'm fine right now. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, next on the list is the motion to adjourn. Do I hear a motion? Do I, Councilor Bard, you made a motion? Yes. Any second? I'll second. Okay, all those in favor of motion to we can adjourn. We all agree on this one. What's that? <laughs> we can all agree on the motion to adjourn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Roll call, please, Laura, on the motion to adjourn. Um, Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Member Peck. Yes. And Member Napolitano. 